can a budget phaser reach boutique tone levels? Well, today we're going to find out. I'm going to be putting a hand wired on tag board ZVEX, ZVEX, show super hard on inside a Behringer vintage phaser. I'm going to take my 15 years experience building guitar effects pedals, mostly at sea in the Royal Navy, and combine it to create a step-by-step -step guide on how you can build the ZVEX super hard on. And if you really want, you could even combine it with a cheap phaser. Cheers. What are we dealing with today? Well, in fact, I really wanted to build a ZVEX super hard on or ZVEX for you American guys. However, I thought it might be a little bit boring just put it in a single little enclosure with one knob on the top, like a boost, you know, there's nothing special about that. And I had in a Behringer, Behringer, Behringer. I'm gonna go with Behringer. Behringer uh, Vintage Chorus. This thing is a massive, cool, sloped enclosure with a tiny little SMD circuit in it. Originally, I was going to mod the circuit, but now I'm thinking I'm just going to add in a ZVEX, ZVEX, sorry, Zach, ZVEX, super hard on into here as sort of a preamp. Thank you so much for watching my content, and I cannot believe that we finally got monetized. So that means we've got, you guessed it, Caps available, t-shirts available, including the brand new wet the tip t-shirt below. Now I've drilled an extra hole in the enclosure. That's gonna be our on off switch. And I've also covered it in this cool leverette with uh, the Flint Flintstones chicks on it, Betty, Wilma. Uh, thanks to my mate Warren for putting this, this artwork out to me again. I, I, everyone seems to love this artwork, so thank you, Warren. Now, Normally, this thing would have a potentiometer, a volume pot, which is a 5K reverse pot that says crackle OK on it. We've all seen that. I haven't put a volume pot on here. I'm going to have it more as a set and forget with an on off switch here. I'm going to use this 10K potentiometer. It's an Iskra one. It's a good one. Uh, instead of the 5K reverse log, it's not going to matter in my application because I'm setting and forgetting. However, one, the closer to zero uh, resistance you get on this potentiometer will mean more gain and more volume. So that's one thing to keep in mind because I could put a resistor in there and not have it adjustable, but I want, kind of want to have the option of making it gainy or making it just like a preamp. Speaking of which, the transistor. I've got this, it's a BS170. So BS170, now I got a batch of these that were actually the wrong way round. So I think they were 2N7000s. However, on the packet that this was in, I wrote on the front, Joe, attention, this one is the right way round. Do not mess up. So I'm assuming that this one is a normal BS170 and not a 2N7000. So when we put it in, it should work. If it doesn't work, I'll take it out, flip it round and see if it works then. Hopefully. Other components you're gonna need. You will need two 10 meg resistors. Yep, 10 meg, massive. Probably the biggest value resistors I've ever used in a pedal. Input cap is gonna be a 0.1 UF or micro farad. So 100 NF cap for the input. Output cap is a 10 UF. Now I've gone non-polar, so then I'm not messing about trying to figure out which way around it goes. I've just got non-polar. It's up to you what you use if you're planning on building this. You need two other resistors. One is a 5.1K, which I have a, um, a vintage one here. I can't remember the brand. Might be Philips, don't know. But it's a 5.1K, and then I've got a more modern carbon film, 100K resistor. You need that too. And then last but not least, you need two 4148 silicon diodes and of course a tag board you need four pads on the tag board to build this one so if you're planning on building it please add in the four tags and you'll have what you need right so the plan is i'll put this to one side we'll build the circuit and then we'll implement it in and see where we go first on the list is our 10 meg resistor and also a 4148 silicon diode. What I'm going to do is clean the legs off. Like that. Clean the legs off. 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 Clean the legs
like so. It's especially important if you're using vintage components to clean the legs off. I spent my first couple of, maybe two years building, chasing vintage components and wondering why nothing I ever built worked. I advise putting the thicker leg components in first and then you can manipulate the thinner leg one over the top. So for me, I'm gonna go into the first lug on the left, the first tag over here on the top side and the left. And then we're gonna come over to the second tag along on the bottom. There we go. Next, we so, oh no, I've got a duty phone call. Right there. Apologies about that, as ever, I am duty. So, where are we? Our 10 meg resistor, this is non-polar. So it doesn't matter which way round you put this in. However, our diode is polar. So the black line needs to go to the second lug along closest to you. And the side without a line on it goes into the first tag at the top. Okay, so it'll go that way round. Again, I like to feed it into the one side first, just the same as any other component. Clip it to length. Ooh. Made a hash of that, didn't I? Clip it to length and then just slot the components in there. Now, of all of the ones of these that I've built, which I've built quite a few to be fair, um, one thing I will say is that when it doesn't work, or if it doesn't work, usually when, <laughs> Um, it's usually because I've got one of these in the wrong way round. So it's worth, before you solder, just have a little check and make sure that the line is pointing towards you and towards the second lug along. Now, we're not gonna solder this tag here because there's other components to go in here, but we can solder this tag at the top. Move them over, because I know I've got to squeeze some other stuff in. So we'll solder that tag at the top. You have to uh, wet the tip, right hey. And for all those people who ask for wet the tip t-shirts, I finally designed it. You can get it in, in my merch store below. Get on. Right, if anyone has ideas for t-shirts, then please let me know. I'm more than happy to, to make any merch's one. Right, so that's in now. Next is gonna be our input cap, which is here. Again, I'm gonna clean the legs, even though this is a new component and probably doesn't need the legs cleaned. I'm gonna do it anyway. Now, I've shown this before, but I'll show it again just because, well, why not? This is clearly too big to fit in them center tags. So, what I'm gonna do is just bend the legs over. And as you can see, it kind of, it lands. So then this fits perfectly through them center holes. So you could just solder it in them center holes there. And that makes sense. Cause then you got more space in here for our next component. So I'll leave that to one side for now because it will get in our way while we're soldering in our next component, which is the other 4148 diode. Same with the last one, it's polar. So you wanna make sure it's going the right way. With this one, it's gonna go away from the from the lug or the tag that this one was pointing towards. So if we make sure that we push it in there and it goes with the line pointing away and it's gonna go into the third tag along on the top. Third tag along on the top, there. Okay. Now, I'm not gonna solder this end because I do have other components to go in there, but I can solder this end. So now we've got all of the, all of the components that are gonna go into this here and there's nothing else going into here, we can now solder in our input cap, which is gonna go here. If I can ever get it to sit in, perfect. Now I'm only gonna solder in this side here. I'll show you in a sec, because we are in fact gonna add in some other stuff to the other end. So what I don't wanna do 
is solder it in and then having to try and slide components into a hole that's already got solder in. It's just, it's not much fun to do. So there we go. I'll tidy the bottom of this leg up just so then it's out the way. There. We'll come back to these outside um, th these outside holes or tags in a bit. I like to, to figure out what's going to go in the center of the tag board first. Next, going into this hole here that we've just put our 4148 in is our 5.1k resistor. Now, this is a real old one, so the legs are particularly grubby. So I'll give it a bit more of a of a clean than I have been doing. Just helps the heat transfer and helps the, the solder solder flow. Now this just goes straight up and down in the third tag along. It's a great beginner circuit this is. I mean, there's not very many components. It sounds great. It's a great design and it, you can get some serious gain out of it, which is fun. I'm going to wet the tip and I'm going to solder in just this top end here for now. fact thinking about it we can actually solder both both ends there we are some people like to snip these off later later on or but for me I like to solder and snip as I go just keeps things tidy and well it just make, makes my mind um, understand it a bit better I suppose now, last last component to go in the center is going to be our 100k resistor. And I keep wanting to say capacitor, but 100k resistor goes right in the end here. And again, it just goes from the four flug along at the top down to the four flug along at the bottom. And again, I'm going to be soldering in both ends. I do highly advise if you're thinking about making a guitar pedal for the first time, and especially if you're thinking about making one on tag board for the first time, this is a great circuit for that. It really is. Now, we've got some components that go along the top here, and the first of which is our other 10 meg resistor. Now, I'm going to give the legs a clean. And this resistor goes from the second pin along where our input cap goes in to the next one along. Now there's two ways of doing this. You can either have it like this and bend both halves down and have it in sort of a D shape. Or what I like to do if the pins are next to each other is just bend one leg over and put it in kind of like that. So if I was to snip that now to the height that I want it. And we've got loads of height in this, um, in this enclosure because it's fitting in one of them uh, sloped enclosures and then I can just rest that in there and it will sit, sit up straight and now I can wet the tip and give it a solder. Now we're only soldering in the half or the, the leg that goes into the input cap, the 100 NF cap because the other side of this is going to be our, you guessed it, our 10, NF, uh, 10 UF cap. Now, usually on these sorts of circuits, the negative points to the outside of the circuit. It doesn't matter because we're using a non-polar, a, a non-polar electrolytic. However, the shorter legs usually they're negative, and it denotes like I don't know—is it the inner or outer foil? Not sure. So I'm going to put the shorter leg pointing outboard or to the outer of the circuit for no other reason than that's the way it would be if it was polar. And so I'm going to do that. Now, this time, we can solder in both legs. Now, if you're building it and you're going to use an external pot, what you would do is, you would run a wire from this over here to earth, uh, sorry, to your pot and then to earth. However, 
because I'm not uh, using a pot and I am using my da -da, my uh, variable potentiometer, so my trim pot, on board here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use some of these off-cut legs to make little legs for this to stretch out to go between this pin here, which is going to be if anyway, and this pin here. So, if we take two of our legs, I've shown this a thousand times before, but I will show it again, why not? Give them a clean and then take a pinch towards the end and give it a bend. And that gives you like a little hook. Same again with this component, a little hook. And now if, if we do the same, I'm gonna snip one leg off because we're gonna use it as a variable resistor instead of a potentiometer. I'm going to do the same with the legs here. I'm just going to bend them into a hook. Like so. Now, I can marry them two up and give them a squeeze together. And I should get, I always say, a good mechanical connection and then have trouble connecting them together. Like Joe Age 5 trying to put them together. Right, you should get a good mechanical connection. That means when I solder them, I know that the solder isn't, it's not just the solder holding them together, it is in fact um, structurally sound. Gives you a good joint and whatnot. I mean, you see it on like D Lab Electronics and stuff, if you watch that ever, where there's been fender amps come from the factory and there's like a solder joint in there that's never had any soldering. And it's literally the mechanical connection that's, um, that's held it in for all that time. Anyway. No, I Give it a good wet the tip. And solder both of these legs in. Now usually I like to add, oh, why did I just burn myself? What an idiot. Why would you grab a hot component leg? I don't know. Um, usually I like to add in a bit of heat shrink to cover these legs up, especially if they're gonna be like in a busy circuit and whatnot. But this isn't a busy circuit, so I'm not gonna do that. And I've forgot my heat shrink. <laughs> I tend to film these videos while I'm duty and work, just because, well, because at the minute I haven't got a workshop because I'm moving. Um, but yeah. So what I'm doing here is I'm just lining this up, and bending the legs over. So then this, this pot will sit right smack bang in the, in the center here. Now, I'm only gonna solder in one half because we, st oh no, I'm not gonna solder them both in. So I can rest that in there and as long as I can get one half to, to sit in there and get it soldered. Should have done the legs longer really because then I would have had a good mechanical connection going into this bit. Well done, Joe. Right. I do highly advise that you just use a regular 5K reverse log potentiometer. I mean, you could use a 5K log potentiometer, but you're not gonna get the right sweep. So reverse log is better. There we are. If you get one half soldered a little bit, what you can do is not touch it when it's hot. Well done, again. Determined to burn myself today. Then we can solder the other half in proper, like so. Try not to put too much heat in these pots. Um, I realize I'm saying that as I'm putting heat in the pot, but they can be fragile. And I find that when I was starting out, that was the bit, I think that probably let me down the most, failure wise was, was trim pots and stuff like that. Right, so why is that in the way? And I've just done it again, burnt myself, well done. I might call this episode trying to build pedals by actually burning yourself instead. <laughs> right. That is everything apart from our BS170 transistor. Now, I used to pick these, um, the, the tape off the back of these. They come on these strips. Pick the tape off the back of these and clean the legs. But just lately, I've started just snipping them straight off. Yes, the legs are a bit smaller, but... I'm lazy and it works. Not that that was important for this video, but there you go. So, 
when you're doing this, if you've got a BS170, you want the flat face facing towards the circuit. However, if you build this with a 2N7000, which isn't the correct one for ZVEX, he uses a BS170, it'll be the opposite way around. But BS170, flat face, facing the pedal. Now, the centre lug goes into, sorry, the centre leg goes into the tag or lug that our input capacitor goes into. And the other two legs go in one lug either side. So from left to right, you've got one, two, three, three with with a, with the transistor in or the BS170 MOSFET in. And the last pin is actually our output. So that that there will just have a wire in it once we um, once we get soldering it into the thing. Now to solder these in transistors, I like to solder the center leg. These are another thing that, that don't particularly love heat. So I like to solder the center leg. No, that's the first time I've picked something up I've soldered today that I haven't burnt myself with. And then straighten the transistor out. Now, if you're gonna bend it up and you've got a small space, you could bend this up like this, or you could leave it lying down. It's completely up to you. But once you've got it straight and both the other legs are even, that's when I would go ahead and solder them in. It just means that they, um, well, they'll stay where you want them to. I would leave a second or two in between solder and the next leg up, but I'm just gonna crack on. Right, that is essentially the PCB or the PCB, the tag board, the tag board for a ZVEX super hard on. That is a fantastic bit of kit, easy to put together. Now, let's get on to wiring it into this beast. Okay, to do this, we're gonna look at the Behringer, oh, do you know what? I, I'm pretty sure I called this a chorus earlier on. It's actually a phaser. Well done, Joe. You don't even know what bloody pedal you're modifying. <laughs> it is, of course, a vintage phaser, v VP1. Brilliant. <laughs> look at this. The box is actually here with me, vintage phaser. Ah. Join the Navy, see the world, lose your mind. Anyway. So here is the circuit drawing for the Behringer Vintage Phaser. If anyone wants this drawing, I can send you a link to it. I found it online. It did take a bit of finding, man, by the way. So our input is over this side here. This here is our input jack. Let's see if I can get something to point at it with. If you can tell me off of pointing at it with my screwdriver, I'll use a pencil. So over here is our input. Make it a bit bigger. There we go, our input. And it goes through, which is, so we've got our input, which is here. And it goes through to, what's labeled up on here is X9 and X2, which is here. X9 is this, this thing here. It's just a, a, a plug connector. And it goes through these terrible wires that I hate, these strip wires, cannot stand them, through to X2 which is this connector here. It's reminding me of being back on board now, tracing little pink wires through control panels, but here you go. So to X2, that's our input. Now, what we wanna do is we wanna place our super hard on, on the input. So you plug your guitar in here, it goes in, it'll go to a switch, and the switch will either send it through to this normal circuit, or it will send it through our super hard on first, and then, through this normal circuit. So what we're trying to do is, we're trying to find which one of these wires is the input to the whole circuit. This is how the pedal sits together. So this is our input jack. And I know that on this jack, this connection here is the live. So that must translate whichever one of these or, um, connects to whichever pin in here. That's the, the wire that I'm trying to intersect. So if I, Move this out of here, if it will come out. Please hate these little connector things. Anyway, if I remove that out the way, what I wanna do is, 
on ohms, I want to see which one gives me a low resistance going between our input jack, which is here, and these pins. So I'm going to go to the one on the far left. Right, that gives me 1.7 ohms, so there's a connection there. The next one along. No connection, open circuit. Next one along, open circuit. Next one along. And that actually gives me a connection. Which I wasn't expecting. So now, I'm going to take a look at the actual... Um, at the actual PCB, if you like. So I can see, if I look at this PCB here... These are the four connections. One, two, three, four. Input jack. If we follow that, there's actually a line that comes up here and goes round the top of this. Here. And do I lose it? No. It's right the way along here, past all that writing. And goes into here. So I'm going to say that it's the wire that goes into this end lug here that is the one that we want. So now it's a case What is beeping at me? Oh. Of course, of course my multimeter is beeping at me. I don't need that on now. So now it's just a case of putting this back together the way that it was. There we are. These are a bit better than the ones on the Joyo pedals, to be fair, to Behringer. Behringer, or whatever you want to call them. Behringer. Right. So I can see, anyway, that this pin here goes along the top and attaches to our input jack live. So this wire here, on this side, which is labelled up as, well, it's just a white wire, this one here. That is the one that I want to be splitting to tap into our input jack. I'm guessing. I mean, if I break this pedal forever, what have I really lost? Now, to break into this, this is what we're going to do. I'm going to take my snips, snip it roughly in the centre. Now, really, I'm going to have to try and find some... Um, some heat shrink, I'm sure I've got some some this. Strip both ends. Wet the tip, well hey. Now, be careful because this wire does melt really easy. So A, try not to touch it, and B, try not to hold your iron on the um, on there for too long. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna make as ever hooks. Then we'll take two reasonable lengths because we don't know how far away our circuit's going to be. And do the same thing. So we strip both ends, give them a twist and make some hooks out of them. You don't really need them that long, but I, I make them long just because it's, it's easy to tin them that way. Can always snip them off a bit closer to it once you've once you've made the hook out of them. There we are. And now we're just gonna extend these wires by marrying the two ends up just like we did before with our component legs. We're gonna do the same thing here. Get a reasonable mechanical connection, if possible, and then give it a solder. Now, of course, when we've done this, the side coming from our jack board is going to be our input, and the side going away to the uh, to the switch is going to be our output of our ZVEX super hard on ZVEX super hard on whatever you want to call it. 
There. Now let me see if I can find some heat shrink and we can get this done properly. Knew I had some somewhere. Heat shrink. No need very much of it. Because we're only covering in the little solder joints. When you're doing this, it is advisable to use a heat gun to um to shrink the heat shrink. I'm not gonna, I'm gonna use a lighter. And of course that adds the added bonus of bringing into play, potentially burning these wires here, which are quite heat sensitive, as opposed to the silicone ones that I like to use. Cheers for that, Berenger. Right, now we're ready for this. We've got our input and our output. Next, it's time to put all this back in the enclosure. Okay, so kind of sits in the enclosure like that. So I'm going to put this board in first. There we are. And now this is held together basically by the uh, input and output jacks, which isn't my favourite way of doing it, to be fair. I would have preferred if they screwed that, that down so that so then there's a, sort of a bit more stable holding it on you know but what are you going to do i'm going to get it all in hand tight and then i'll tighten it up with a with a spanner afterwards so there's that board fit right, next is the is this sort of board hmm have I got this the wrong way round? Five hours later. Right, sorry about that, folks. I had a little bit of a, what do you call it? A faux pas, brain fart, whatever. So that does fit in that way round. And, but if I put that in first, when I go to put the other part of it in, it actually won't go in because it's in a way. So if we move these two all the way, look at this making a mess. We'll put this in first, like so. Because then everything else can kind of fit around it. Now this is held in by two screws. So we've got these two these two stanchions attach into these two holes via these two screws. So if we get that in place and get some screws through. I have cut holes for the screws just with a knife so they should push through hopefully he says. There we go. And then Hopefully, I'll be able to just screw this down like so. I've got to say, I'm not a massive fan of these SMD bloody boards that bolt to the thing. What, what a terrible way to make a pedal. I, I realise they're like super cheap and that is fantastic. I, I, but... Come on. I suppose one good thing is, this circuit, the way that it is, it is would be massive. And I'd never be able to squeeze a, a super hard on in with it if it was full size, so there we are. So that's that board in, screwed in there. We've got our pot and our switch and our LED. So, Next, we'll put this in because we can now squeeze it in on the top without worrying about trying to squeeze everything in underneath. Um, there we are. As I said before, I'll tighten all of this up once um, once we've got it back together. And then last but not least, there is this, the, uh, the stomp switch. It's a bit of a weird setup here, I don't know if you can see that. But you've got this a switch, stomp, stomper, on a, uh, on a spring that's just touching a tiny little uh, push switch inside it. I've never really seen things done like this, so it's much easier just to use a three pole double throw switch or what have you, but there you go. It must be cheaper to make them this way, I imagine. 
I haven't actually gone with one of my crazy big washers for this one because well it's got a metal washer anyway at least they've done, to be fair on Behringer they've done everything they can to make um, this this circuit as, as vintage looking as you can get so now that that's all together my trusty adjustable today and not the peppers pedals um, plastic socket set things I don't know what they're called socket sets or whatever because I am in fact in work and I forgot them now one thing if you are doing a leverette you don't need to joints otherwise it just cuts into the leverette you want to hold it but you don't want to like destroy the look of the pedal because we all know we look with our eyes of course we do now our, our battery mounts in here so we're going to mount our super hard on on this this area down here mm, maybe i'll do away with the battery and have it mounted in there not sure what do we think if you were doing this where would you mount it would you mount it in the center here so then it, it looks nice and it's easy to get to or would you mount it on the edge here i mean if we look at our enclosure it's not going to foul the front here i could even mount it in the enclosure there but i'm not going to i'm going to go here there's nothing on the enclosure front here so it's not going to foul anything i would prefer if this battery compartment wasn't there and it was indeed we could just put this there but what can you do this is a great enclosure by the way for the money it's worth it just for the enclosure now when i drilled this you get these this sort of swarfy uh, can you see it there maybe this sort of swarf on on the air uh, because it's an aluminium it pushes it out instead of instead of uh, drilling through properly it's pain in the, in the backside usually i file that off but i forgot to do it today so i'm going to try and just get it off with my flat nose pliers see if i can see if i can get it off that way and then when we attach in our double pole double throw switch to engage our preamp or our super super hard on you don't have to get it all off just most of it because it will actually compress once i tighten down the switch anyway next stage i'm gonna get the switch and then attach my circuit in here with the usual jb weld method everyone who served with me on hms kent will know how much i love jb weld it never worked for anything but it's fantastic for this um right yeah i'm gonna jb weld that in and we'll fit our double pole double throw switch switch mounted and um, our tag board is now in regular viewers will be really proud of me that i actually remember to buy on off switches instead of on off on switches like i use for their uh, um, clipping diodes and, and switching out capacitors and stuff so we have actually got off uh, sorry off and on on this one great double pole double throw and that's where we're going to start so this is our input from our input jack and first things first we wanted to go to our switch which is located here so all i'm going to do is i'm just going to run this to the first to to the first half of the switch and it's going to be the center lug now the reason why it's the center lug is because that's the one that can that is switched basically if you like as i'm sliding the wire in it's wanting to pop out so all i'm going to do is just because i've tinned it then it's malleable and but also stiff so what I'm going to do is just bend it a little bit so it stays in place in the switch while I solder it in. No problem at all. And again, like with potentiometers and with um, transistors, switches are another thing that may be affected by heat. So it's always advisable just to not hold the solder and iron on there for too long or longer than you'd have to. Now, I'm going to use a thousand... Um, cable ties in here for my father-in-law Glenn he loves cable ties in these pedals I say it all the time but he genuinely does love it in there <laughs> cheers Glenn um, so I'm going to try and keep this running in line with it and I'm going to make this wire run in line with that one and go into the centre lug on the opposite side because that is going to be our output and then I'll put a load of cable ties in there unnecessarily I literally have no 
no structural value whatsoever because it looks good prove me wrong and again I imagine when I push this in it's going to want to pop out yeah so all I do is I take my snips once it's pushed in just give it a little bend and that'll hold it in place it doesn't have to be much of a bend but that'll hold it in place while you can uh, solder it in you could of course get them little handy hands that hold things together and what have you but that would be way too professional and I would consider it actually unhello sailor effects <laughs> if that's a word now I'm going to take one of my off cuts you don't have to have a massive loop and I'm going to skim both ends, skim both ends, I'm going to um, strip both ends, give both ends a tin, there you go, actually while I'm on a the subject, these Nipex snips, I. It was Marcus Reeves of Reeves Electro. Cheers, Marcus, if you never watched this. Doubt it. But he put me onto these snips, and they are literally the best snips in the world. They last forever, the sharp as you like. And, you know, literally, I've had these for... Well, I've had a million pairs of them, but they, they do last forever. Now, while we're on the subject of snips, I'm actually now an Amazon affiliate. So if you want to get your own pair, rather than buying them yourself... If you press the link below or in my description, go to the link in my description, go to the snips and click on them, go through Amazon, I'll actually get a little bit of a kickback. I don't know how much or whether to do because no one's actually bought anything from any of my affiliates before. But there you go. You can get these snips. You can get the, the Hakko soldering iron that I use and love. Um, mine's been around the world with me, so it's got sentimental value too. And that actually helps the solder and that sentimental value adds to the solder joint, I think prove me wrong anyway so if we tin both the ends give it a little bend and we can uh, put that in there if you put it in the bottom two lugs uh, the bottom two pins that means that when it's in a down position it'll be on and the up position will be off and that's the way around that I want it of course what you could do is label all of your switches and pots and then you wouldn't have to worry about which way round you put them but I don't like labels as we've discussed before Right, so that's basically why I did. Now, all that's going to come off this switch is this inboard side is going to go to the input and the outboard side is going to go to the output. Now, the output goes to the leg of the 10NF cap that isn't attached to our MOSFET. So the very end pin, if you like, the very end tag is the, is the output. It's a bit weird because it doesn't go through a pot on this circuit because um, the, the super hard on the show the crackle okay bit is just controlling the bias of the transistor so there's no actual volume pot on it it's just biasing the transistor differently the more you allow the transistor to see if the, um, the the more gain you're going to get so we can just wire our output straight in to our switch and providing I got the the, the wire and right on the jacks we should technically be right but we'll see While we're on the subject of wiring, what what do you prefer? Do you prefer this sort of style when I'm soldering on tag board and modifying a pedal at the same time? Or do you prefer me to make a pedal from scratch out of tag board? Or just what about the old school style that I was doing where I was just taking something like a boss pedal and modifying it on the PCB itself without any tag board? What's, what's the preferred video method? I'm getting my my uh, my analytics on YouTube are quite mixed, really. It's random, real hit or miss whether um, whether people like the build or not. I mean, I suppose that's like got guitar altogether, isn't it? Show me ten guitarists, I'll show you twelve different points of view. Anyway, next we've got our 
so th this is going to be the fun bit we've got our nine volt and so here this pin here which goes to our 5.1k resistor if you can remember that that's our nine volt supply so this here is going to go round to our jack which is a center negative so if we follow that center pin right the way through the bottom there it comes through to here so there's our our negative and then our live is going to be one of these two here now one of them connects to our battery which is the middle one here i don't know if you can see that properly but the middle pin of our dc jack connects to the live of the battery so that's switched we don't want to connect to that that is the nine volt in okay so i'm going to follow the same wire and loom i'm going to go right the way around here come up here and then it connects into it here now to attach to this what i should do is use a solder sucker i think that's the correct term solder sucker i haven't got an amazon affiliate to one of them bad boys because i never bloody used them um solder sucker to suck all the solder out of this and then maybe uh, you know try and squeeze the, the the wire through or something like that not for me what i am actually going to do is i'm going to strip the end of this wire probably a bit longer than i normally would i'm going to twist it and tin it then i'm going to wet me tip and i'm going to hold the wire up against the connection and then just that dab my tip onto it try and melt the solder that's there if I can hold it on right next is going to be an interesting one and this is the last wire now i believe so these two tags here one that goes to our 10k well mine's a 10k trim pot if you're going to do this real properly the way that zvex does it it's a 5k trim pot so there this one and the other end lug over here join together and then join to earth so as we said before we know that this bottom dc pin here is earth so what i'm going to do is i'm going to make a jumper out of this not like a woolly jumper for christmas and anything like a cable jumper over here and then one end of it so if I basically cut it to the size I want and I tend to cut these just a bit bigger than I want and, um, and strip the ends just a bit longer than you need just helps when you twist it together I'll twist one end and give that a tin because that's going to go into one of our one of our tags doesn't really matter which one but I'm going to put that in the top one where the where the DC jack is just because then our cable can run down the bottom it'll look neat and then I take another bit of wire from my dispenser. Thank you, Hacko. Brilliant. It's got to be the best solder and brand, right? What I, is it? Device of Hacko versus Weller? Or so, I know some people like the modern wireless things. I can't do that. I'm just beeps at me. It turns off. It turns on. It cools itself down. But when I don't want it to, I can't stand them new fangled things. But most people either like Hacko or Weller, don't they? I'm definitely a Hacko guy. Maybe it's because the bright, obnoxious colours. I don't know. Right, so I'm going to take a new wire that I've stripped and the end that I haven't tinged yet, put them together so then the, uh, the insulation matches up and then just give it a twist. And then when I, when I tin this, that makes two become one. Get in, a bit of Spice Girls, two become one. It's taking me back to my youth there because I was, of course, a child in the 90s, early 2000s. Right, so now when i insert these two into the previously discussed tags that'll join them both to if i can solder them in and then give it a tidy up there we are I don't know why I do that. So I watch this thing where uh, the boys from that pedal show go to Rift Amps, Rift Amplification, build themselves, tweet deluxes. Great. It's a great episode. And I'll probably link it above 
if if anyone wants well if i can then get above all i'll put it in the show notes it's definitely worth watching because it's a fantastic episode anyway chris from rift says don't blow your solder joints and he's right because it cools them down too quickly you can get a weak joint but my automatic reaction is like every single time i do a solder joint i can't help myself but try and blow it insane anyway i'm waffling on so we're going to run our air fry around pretty much the same way as we did our live try and tuck it under the board there to keep it nice and neat and if we do that when we come to adding in our ridiculous amount of colored cable ties it should look pretty decent right there we are and again i'm going to snip a bit more off than i need and that's so that then if I have to wrap it round this lug then I can, but I didn't have to last time. If you get a good bit of solder on there. If anyone watching this has got young kids, I've got the song from the Disney film Encanto stuck in my head today because my five year old's had it on for the past week. Driving me insane. There's nothing like thinking about good music, you know, where, where's the Stevie Ray or what have you? And I'm listening to bloody Encanto Disney movies. Who am I kidding? I love Disney movies. Not the new stuff. Anyway, there we are. I'm going to go ahead now and get some cable ties on this and make it look pretty there we have it some nice pretty purple uh, zip ties cable ties whatever you want to call it just for you glenn cheers ship mate so that's our circuit now wired in however when i come to test it i'm going to test it with both the gain turned down and the gain turned up so depending on which way we have that will depend on whether it's going to be like a a gainy boost or just a, a boost i'm going to go ahead now and just um put the bottom on put the knob on um i will eventually put some sort of bezel over the led as well and then we'll get a sound sample there we go our pedal within a pedal is complete we have our regular behringer phaser on off switch with an intensity switch and and, and the um the volume pot on there and then we have our off on switch for our ZVEX super hard on. Now we could use it as an always on preamp or as it have it as adding a bit of gain or whatever. Now that we've built our ZVEX super hard on in our Behringer enclosure, I'd love to know what you think of the process of doing this pedal. And also, are you going to try it out? Now let's get on to the sound sample. <laughs> If you enjoyed the building of this pedal, you're going to absolutely love the building of this pedal, which is a box of rock from ZVEX, all on tagboard.